Hey gang, I know this video is a little late, but I had a scorpion on me. And there was lightning all in my face. And there was an iguana all in my face. And then there was a flood. More on that later. Guys, you know me and you know I've seen some stuff, but this eclipse was one of the most spectacular things I've ever seen, and I urge you not to miss the next one coming up. We were at a McDonald's in Belleville, Kansas, and I overheard this guy say, I can just watch the eclipse on the internet. That's like Natalie Portman calling you up and saying, hey baby, want a date? And you saying, I can just watch you on the internet. Ladies, you can swap out Brad Pitt or Eddie Murphy, I don't know. Let me just say there is no photo or video of the eclipse in the world more beautiful than the one you'll have in your own melon. However, photos and videos will help you cherish that moment. This is our video of how we captured the eclipse. The most important decision you'll make is choosing your viewing location. If you want to avoid clouds and crowds, this can get tricky. We're right here. Nebraska is where I thought would be the best place to view the eclipse simply because there's so many roads. We can get exactly where we want. We can get right on that line. We can find a place by ourselves, probably. Right now, clouds are forecast to cover the state of Nebraska. So I think my Nebraska plan is foiled. I hate to tell you this, but the grass is greener. In Missouri, we got 50-50 chances of cloud cover. There's a lot of towns here where everybody's gonna be trying to get to this line, but I, there's still enough roads where I think we can navigate around them. The pros of, of Missouri is two days of storm chasing and no driving. Now, I'm not a storm chaser, so I can't sympathize Okay, then your opinion doesn't mean anything. So, <laughs> considering thunderstorms muddies the waters of decision making, concerning the main reason we're out here, which is to see the eclipse. It's like grasping for two things and losing both. All right, which leaves us Wyoming. I think 100% chance we can get into Wyoming and there'll be no clouds. The problem with Wyoming is there's only one road. Everybody from Denver is gonna be coming up. Some meteorologists are gonna say, sorry, there's clouds here, there's clouds here. Everybody there's go to Wyoming now. Rush. And we could get stuck in Nebraska on the interstate just trying to get there. If we get there early enough and we can find some little place to hole up, we can sleep in the car or on the side of the road and just stay there, even though it'll be uncomfortable, even though it'll be 80 degrees, even though there'll be flies. So we're not gonna get a good night's rest. So we're gonna be watching this event Tired, tired, grumpy. But I think that just like when you do a show, you get that burst of attentive energy. We're gonna get C1 endorphins kick in, and then C2 endorphins. I think you're probably right. So this place is probably gonna be packed with cars. Jam packed. There's gonna be some roads, little roads that come down like this. It might be neat to see the traffic. It's the like a freaking Steven Spielberg's movie, man. It's like, what is it, uh, Close Encounters? When there's a line of cars. Yeah. That's part of the joy of it, seeing humanity gather for a huge celestial event. In Wyoming, we might be stuck with wherever we land there. So we could be stuck next to some dude blasting Van Halen mm -hmm. during the eclipse. You just made it real, dude. Yeah. Then again, this is an eclipse. It's like, so it's kind of the National Park crowd, which is generally a respectable crowd. Hey, baby. Sure. Yeah, notice our body language is... <laughs> yeah, it's turning true. back on Missouri. <laughs> It's this like a, the hot girl. It's in. like the woman. Yeah, you can tell if she likes the guy because she kind of. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, get, I think we are kind of turned towards Wyoming. Cheers. Let's roll the dice. Yeah. All right, Craig's back there doing something in the trunk, and uh, we're gonna put him on the spot in front of the camera. He's a coffee snob, and watch how he's gonna try to hide from the camera that he's a coffee snob. So dude, um, there's a gas station right here, which, so we should probably get some coffee at this gas station. You're cool with that, right? Well, the, the real thing is, this is, you said a gas station is just get two birds stoned at once. And I understand, but it was packed full 
in yeah. the bathroom. But there's nobody in there right now. Okay. You cool with that? Yeah, but I know that I'm gonna drink that coffee and have to shit down the road. Oh, <laughs> right. <laughs> Did you just? This is it. We're now in Wyoming. It's like the dream. Look at this awesome dude. We were fortunate to find a serene location in Wyoming all by ourselves. My objective was to let my cameras capture the event while I kicked back and just experienced it. Sometimes, right before totality, a creepy river of ghost shadows crawl out of nowhere and start slithering across the land. They're called shadow bands, and scientists still can't explain them. I set camera one on video pointed down at the road in case they were summoned. Then I'd swing that camera around at the sun and the moon. Camera two is zoomed up on the eclipse with an intervalometer ready to start snapping a still every second. Camera three is set wide to capture the falling darkness and 360 degree sunset. Here's how it all turned out. Shadow bands! Really? Shadow bands! Look at the road, you can barely see them. <laughs> wow. Wow. I'm doing my 360, 360 sunset all the way around. Awesome. Set. Oh, did you hear the coyotes? During totality, the moon is the blackest black you'll ever see with the naked eye. It doesn't look real and it's creepy. When you see this, you suddenly understand all the fear that this event created among our ancestors. And there it is. And it's all coming back. That was it. That was the show. After the sun returned, you had this overwhelming feeling inside you, like you had just fallen in love and lost it. Mm. Well, a few days ago, Category 4 Hurricane Harvey hammered the southeast Texas coast. I apologize for not having much footage to show you guys. This storm was expected to dump catastrophic rain on my hometown Houston, which it did. So rather than risking getting stranded or separated from my family during all this, I remained close to home. My family was fortunate, but many Texans were not so lucky. This storm may end up being the costliest natural disaster in U.S. history. Houston hasn't hesitated to start helping out those affected, and there's already floods of donations raining down from Good Samaritans from all over. Look at this. All these people are helping. Houston is the city that took in the bulk of the New Orleans evacuees during Hurricane Katrina. You can damn sure bet we're going to look after our own. Till next time, friends, happy trails.